Do you like what you are seeing? If the answer is yes, continue watching and I'll show you how. Golf is 007, turn right, heading 185, reduce speed 182 or not. 185 on the heading, 180 on the speed golf air 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 or not to 40 of me. 160 to 4, speed 121. Hello there guys and welcome to my latest FSX tweaking slash tutorial video. In today's video we are going to be looking at something that I think is widely misunderstood throughout the FSX community, even by myself, and that is DirectX 10. Now as a recent switcher, if you could call that, to DirectX 10, I hope this video will share some light on how you can tweak your system to best use DirectX 10 to its fullest potential, and then maybe some of you DirectX 9 addicts will think about making the change. Before we start, I have to say that this is not free. There is gonna be some payware tools involved, so if you've already spent enough of your hard-earned cash on Flight Simulator, you might as well turn off the video now, unless you wanna see, of course, what the results are like towards the end. So, as you can see, the picture on the screen, DirectX 10 does look mighty fine. I'm not going to blow it up to be more than it is, because it is good, but it's not, you know, I'm not going to start singing its praises 24-7. It is, however, good enough for me to switch over to it on a permanent basis. Now, let me address the two main things about DirectX 10 that people seem to be worried about. Number one is stability, and number two is performance. I'll go over what I know about stability and performance really, really quickly. Stability in DirectX 10 seems to be valid vastly improved by the fact that I've not seen so far any out of memory errors and nobody seems to be reporting any out of memory errors on any of the forums that you visit. Also I've not had a crash yet with DirectX 10, again you don't really see that reported on any of the forums either. Secondly to performance, now performance in DirectX 10 is not going to be significantly improved or significantly decreased, it will remain the same as DirectX 9. But as far as the visual performance, what you see, it is aesthetically stunning. So, how do we get to this point? Well, it appears that the FS community once again has been given a rather talented individual, a guy called Steve. Now, Steve created something with the help, I think, of a few other people, but he's the main guy, called the DirectX 10 Fixer. I know, great name, good job, Steve. It is essentially doing everything for you in one little tool. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so excuse the messy desktop. I am yet to clear it up, but hey, we're not here for that. This is the DirectX 10 fixer from uh, the guy I was just talking about, Steve. And it is really quite self-explanatory. Now, when you first get this, you can purchase this from, I think it was Flight Sim Store I got it from. Uh, it comes as an EXE, you install it, and then it's just a pretty much a plug-and-play bit of kit. Install it, boot it up, Choose your FSX path, you can install the libraries that it comes with, and then you just simply switch it across to DirectX 10. It changes some stuff in your config, and you are good to go. Now, I'm going to skip the anti-aliasing bit for now. We will come back to that when we go to actually tweaking Flight Sim, because it matters. This, this number is extremely important. As far as the shaders go, you can use whatever you like. I mean, I've put them all on, because why the hell not? More the better. If you have problems, you can always read the manual. It's a breakdown of what each individual shader does. But I have them all on, and there is absolutely zero problems so far. Okay. Back to anti-aliasing. Now, you have a bunch of presets. You can either choose to have no AA if you want your flight simulator to look like a bread knife. That's completely fine. Two is kind of low-end-ish. Four, getting better. I've chose eight. Sixteen and thirty-two is just overkill. Now, from eight times, you need to make sure that this directly correlates to what you have in your FSX config and also in NVIDIA Inspector. Again, ATI users that follow me, I really am sorry, I don't do ATI. There are other people out there that absolutely adore ATI, so I'm sure you can find an alternative solution. Actually, as I'm saying this, I do know where there is an alternate solution for ATI users. I will post it under the video. So, keep in mind what you have here, eight times uh, on the anti-aliasing for me, and we will jump over to the FSX config, and I will show you what to do next. So, here we are in the FSX config. I will post it below, as always. You can always copy it, etc, etc. I have no issues with that. 
First of all is buffer pools, as you can see here. Pool size zero, reject threshold equals blah, blah, blah. You've seen it all before, it's standard tweaking stuff. If we come further down the FSX config, you'll see that we are on the graphics section. Now this is rather important. For DirectX 10 to work, although the DirectX fixer should have done this, you need to make sure that the D3D10 entry is equal to one. Also, you need to make sure that multi samples per pixel and multi sample quality are directly equal to what you set in the DirectX 10 fixer. So I set eight times, so it's eight. If I set four, it would be four. If I set two, it would be two. Texture max load is at 2048 and I'm using a shader mod as well so the allow shader 30 equals 1 is also present. Scrolling further down to the terrain section and we can see that we have swap weight timeout equal to 2 and also in the scenery section we have max async batching jobs equals 3 and small part reject radius to 4. Coming back up the config towards the display section we have texture bandwidth molt set to 80. We have texture max load set to 12. We do not have a frame rate limiter because we're going to set that through NVIDIA Inspector. And of course, wide view aspect equals true if you are using a widescreen monitor. Next section is job scheduler. Affinity mask for me is 84. I will put below the video every newer processor and what their affinity mask should be just to kill the confusion really. Okay so save all that and now we can go across to Nvidia Inspector. Okay so on to Nvidia Inspector. Make sure you have the latest version and all you need to do is directly copy these settings of which I have apart from two. It is transparency super sampling and anisotropic pronunciation filtering setting, they also must directly correlate to what you've set in the FSX config and the DirectX 10 fixer. So I have 8, I choose 8 times sparse grid super sampling. Note sparse grid super sampling, not just super sampling, it has to be sparse grid. So if you did 2 in the DirectX 10 fixer and 2 in the config, you would choose 2 times sparse grid super sampling. Same down here for the uh, filtering setting, uh, which I'm not going to pronounce again because I sucked at it, 8 times. As far as all of the other anti-aliasing settings being application controlled, that is perfectly normal because you're actually going to set the anti-aliasing inside of Flight Simulator itself. Note as well that we have a frame rate limit of 30 FPS. If you want to play with that, by all means go ahead. But I find if I render out more than 30 frames within FSX, the ground textures go a little bit blurry. And I hate blurry textures. Okay, so into the sim, I suppose, so I can show you my in-sim settings. Okay, so my in-sim settings are as follows. You can see that my target frame rate is unlimited because we set it through NVIDIA Inspector. My filtering is set to anisotropic, anti-aliasing is ticked, global texture resolution is very high, and preview DirectX 10 and advanced animations is also ticked. You can copy down the aircraft settings and you can also copy down the scenery settings, and you can also copy down the weather settings. Please note here, cloud detail, if you run Active Sky, you do not need to turn this on. As long as it's detailed clouds are checked, you can keep the cloud coverage density at low because Active Sky auto injects its own weather system. I only found that out the other day. It is actually quite useful to know. You can also copy down my traffic settings. So, to end, I will say a few things. Although DirectX 10 isn't perfect, it is definitely a step forward in making your flight simulator look and feel a lot better than it does already. I will say that some developers of scenery, it seems to be mostly, tend to outright refuse to make their scenery compatible for DirectX 10. So, if you have some payware scenery, you probably should check if they support DirectX 10. If they don't, the chances of you seeing the textures work at night or show at night is pretty much zero. It just shows us black kind of maps on the ground. But again, some developers do choose to acknowledge that we want to use DirectX 10 and they include fixes. That's really all I've got to say on the matter. I'd absolutely love your feedback in the comments of what your experience was with DirectX 10 and 
if you haven't made the jump or you did make the jump and you are thinking about it now, then absolutely let me know. I will be using this for the foreseeable future until something stops me and it doesn't look like much is going to stop me at the moment. Thank you very much for watching, I do appreciate it massively. If you like the video then please thumbs it up, also feel free to share it amongst your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you're new, welcome to the only channel on the internet with a logo that apparently is shaped like a penis. Until next time, take care all and see you later. Bye guys.